Mitch, and there you have it, the biggest risk in a dozen years here for a full-blown default. And I want to go now to CNN senior political analyst John Avalon with me, as well as uh, economic analyst Jim Bianco. So, uh, Jim, when, when you hear this today, Janet Yellen saying, the Treasury Secretary, uh, that, that there's just not the tax receipts to drag this on much more, how significant is it? Oh, it's significant on two levels. I mean, the first one is the tax receipts came in much weaker than expected. And that's confirming, like the GDP report that we saw last week, that the economy is, you know, not doing great. It's not a recession, but it's definitely heading in the wrong direction right now. And it's not too late to turn it around, but things are are, are not going well. But I will take a bit of, uh, you know, positive news out of this. They're talking. At least we've got that part going. For the last several months, they weren't even doing that. So there is hope on Wall Street here that this is the first step in a process that will lead to a resolution of this issue. And, of course, Wall Street, John, they'll hold out that hope because mm-hmm. they've been right in the past. But as Manu said, uh, this may be different than the past dozen years and what's happened again and again. And I will point out back since then, 2011, 4,288 days since the United States lost its top credit rating yeah. from S&P. OK, when you you know lose your credit rating, your credit score goes down, you pay more in interest. That's 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 how that works. Yeah. So once we lost it. 4,288 days have gone by, and we haven't done anything to get it back. That's right. And look, you know, the the taxpayers, bondholders, those are the folks who keep paying for this um, division and dysfunction in Congress. And it's got to be said, as Congress tricycles towards this debt ceiling again, (laughs) which is, you know, this is sandbox politics, um, that this is something that only happens when Democrats are president. Right. It's important to, to just remember that, you know, that Republicans raised the debt ceiling three times when Donald Trump was president in bipartisan coalitions. We're the only nation in the world that does this to ourselves. Mm-hmm. And it makes democracy look self-defeating in the eyes to some of our strategic competitors, which is the really big game. So th- this is th- you know, acting too sanguine, as, as Phil said. Yeah, I think people have been way too sanguine given the polarization in this country. And, and Jim, to this point, you retweeted something today that I thought was interesting. You, you retweeted a tweet that said, second largest bank failure ever. Uh, and then you said, highest Fed funds rate since 2007 and the lowest volatility rating based on the S&P index since late 2021. You're pointing at a confluence of several things that add up to what? That, that you know, the markets are, you know, in a period of <clears throat> uncertainty. I know that's an overused term. But right now, between what's happening with the banks, what is concerning about what's happening in the bond market, it's not in a position of strength that you can throw on another issue like the debt ceiling and say, well, the markets will just, you know, this will be water off a duck's back. No, it won't. This could be something that could metastasize Mm -hmm. into a bigger problem when you already start with markets that are in the position that they're in right now. So it is concerning. I know people tend to focus on say, the Dow Jones Industrial Average or the S&P 500 and go, well, it's not really falling, so there's no real urgency. Mm -hmm. That's true. But that's only a handful of technology stocks that's holding it up. You look beyond that and you see lots of problems everywhere in financial markets. And and John, Biden has said this is this is why people should vote for him. Last time around, he said, because in situations like this, moments like this, I can talk to both sides. He's got this meeting coming up. Here we go. But in 2019, I did a town hall with him, and he said this is exactly the kind of situation of why I should be president. Here's what he said. Look, one of the problems and the responsibility of a president is to be able to persuade people. But we got a lot done by pure compromise. Remember, every time we got in trouble and couldn't get something passed in the House or the Senate, who got sent up to the Hill? I even convinced the Republicans to increase taxes on the wealthy for the first time ever by $600 billion on New Year's Eve day when we were about to go under in terms of reneging on the national debt. This is something I've done. I can do it again. This is a test of that promise. And look, you know, yeah. May 9th, it's good that the four congressional leaders are meeting with the president at the president's request. But this is coming fast. And May 9th doesn't communicate the urgency that should be had. Look, a lot of folks said, warned of this could be a problem and said Democrats in the Biden administration should have gotten ahead of this to take it off the table before they had unified control. Now they don't. Are there any areas where they can negotiate? Sure. I think there are things in that proposal that have broad bipartisan support, clawing back COVID uh, uh, money already spent. Right. It's a small item, but important. I think workfare is reasonable, streamlining energy regulations. But a lot of the other stuff is either self-defeating or totally off the table when it comes to bipartisan coalitions. And it actually shouldn't be attached 
to the debt. But this will be a test of Biden being able to make a deal and Mitch McConnell being able to rein in the crazy wing of his political party. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks to you, Jim Bianco, as well. And next, that Russian train.